My name is Connie Goff and I'm a music teacher at Tamarack Elementary School. And uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Coming here nine years ago, <laughs> it was a big culture shock. When talking with some people from here, it was just uh, different. Sometimes they thought, oh, might not understand. Am I talking too fast? Am I talk it's like, oh, are you understanding <laughs> everything that I'm saying? Oh, are you, oh, you speak Mexican or stuff like that. And it's, it's subtle, but there are so many more countries <laughs> uh, that they have, they're, they're not aware of, hey, there are other people that speak other, Spanish. I was born and raised in Honduras all my life. I lived there since I was born until I was 17. I, I graduated high school when I was 16. And um, I studied in Honduras for a year in the university over there and then decided that I wanted to do music. I had already studied English because I grew up in a bilingual school. Uh, growing up, I always came with a tourist visa. Getting a tourist visa <laughs> involves a lot just for that. First of all, you gotta have the funds. They, if you don't have any money, you're not gonna get out of the country. You better speak some type of English. <laughs> they do have translators and, and all that. However, they prefer or they, they lean toward people that speak the language, have the fundings, and have the, the documentation to back up. Hey, I can, I'm just going there to travel. I can pay for my expenses and all that. If you don't have any of that, how are you gonna get the visa? And it's a very intimidating appointment where somebody just decides if you're, whether you're gonna come or not through a window and you can't say anything else. You have to be extremely proper. They're like, so what is your business in States? What are you gonna do over there? You gotta fit several boxes before they actually give you one. These people that wanna come across the border, they just don't want to go. It's not that they don't want to go through all that. They know that as soon as they put a foot there, they're gonna be like, okay, I'm sorry, you need to go. Because they don't fit all those boxes. They don't have the fundings. They don't look a certain way. They don't speak a certain, uh, the language, even if it's just a little bit. I know for sure in my country, the drug dealing thing, which that's the easy way to do money and some people get involved with that and that, that leads to killing and all these other things in there, which makes, makes, it, makes it seem as one of the murder capitals of the world. It used to be. So I can see, I understand why the people want to get out of that. Just coming over here, it's a great opportunity. I don't care if it's just waiting tables. You make, you have your $2 that you make plus the tips that you make you make way more money. Um, in Honduras, I know, I think it's 10,000, 10,000 empiras. That's like, a, like $150 a month, which is not a lot. Even if it's just waiting tables or clean bathrooms or something, they know they're gonna have a better way to provide than a better way to provide back home. They live in, a, in a, an environment where it's better for the mom to say, you know what, just take my child. If Even my child can have a better life than what I have here. Because maybe the husband got involved in something that wasn't right and then sh they killed him and then she was just left with all the kids. She has no way of providing. Here, no, just take my kids. Even, they're gonna make it over there. They're gonna have a better life than over here because over here they can get killed. So they don't understand what the situation is, how they grew up <laughs> scared, or the poor environment that making the come in here the right way impossible, which is that's why I think a whole lot of families just like decide to just come here through the border, crossing the border either by the river, by the plane, whatever, ground. And uh, they prefer to go through all that than staying because staying would require for them either to die or to live in a substantial life that it that it's not good. If I ever have a kid in my classroom I wanna I want them to let me know where they come from, who they are, and how they identify themselves as well and I want them to feel comfortable. For example one of my kids that's from has a Salvadorian background. So I would never refer to them Oh, like in a way they're just from Mexico, no. I know there are other countries in the world so that speak Spanish, so I'm like, oh, how's your family in El Salvador? So go directly to where they're from, not just try to guess. I prefer to ask. 
So I would encourage people to ask <laughs> instead of just guessing. So if you know where a somebody comes from, you can kind of correlate how they're going to interact, how they're going to be, and you can, uh, I guess, modify your way of teaching, not teaching, but modify your way of addressing to each of the students in that way, depending on where it comes from, which I know it's going to be hard. If you have, like in my example, I see the whole entire school. <laughs> so modifying for the 500 kids, it's kind of hard, but taking the time to know your students, it's important. And it's the starting point for sure. And that is the, like, the where we want to get to in our classrooms, is for us to create a safe environment where kids are able to express themselves. And a way to do it is just getting to know your students. I am Connie Goff and I am an advocate.